Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. And welcome to this video, Blender in the Fourth Dimension. I thought it would be kind of fun to take a little bit of a break from the tutorials and just look at the physics of Blender and really the physics of 3D modeling as we know it in Blender. So if we do something like uh, Shift A and go to Mesh and re we create a cube here, we know from experience that if we tab into this cube in edit mode, we have down here a number of views that we can use. We have the vertex view, the edge view, and the face view. Well, why do we use these kind of views in order to create objects in Blender? Well, if we think about physics and think about how objects are made up and the different dimensions are created, then we can kind of understand a little bit better why the way things are in Blender and pretty much also why the way things are in physics. So the more you understand about the physics part of it, the better you understand Blender and vice versa. So I'm just going to tab out of this, choose X delete, and let's go ahead and create a uh, diff different dimensional object. So I'm going to choose Shift A, go to Mesh, I'm going to choose Plane, and I'm going to tab into Edit Mode, come down here, make sure Vertex is selected, and I'm just going to Shift Select the extra three ver vertices here, choose X to delete vertices, and now I'm left with this one vertex out here. And I'm going to go ahead and go to control up arrow, full screen view, so we can see this a little bit better. So while this is selected, I can move it around and that sort of thing. But if I try to zoom in, you'll notice that no matter how much I try to zoom in, I am not going to get any closer to that point. This is because this point, this vertex, is a zero dimensional point. It is the lowest possible place you can get in the dimensional world, as far as we know it. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you can move it around because you can have uh, like an imaginary um, coordinates in space where you, you think this, this point is. But if you try to scale it, so if I try to choose S and scale this up, you'll notice no matter how much I try to scale this, it does not get any larger. And that kind of makes sense because it has no width, has no thickness and it has no length. So you can't scale any of those dimensions. So this is a zero dimension object. Now in order to go forward into the next dimension, let's say we want to create a one dimension object. While this is selected, I'm going to choose Shift D to duplicate. Click off of that and I'm just going to drag it up along the Y here just so it's nice and even. And so now we have two reference points in space. Well, we have locations, but again, they are just zero dimensional objects. But what happens if I choose E extrude, select off of that, and I'm just going to extrude it down here. And I'm going to connect these together. I'm going to shift select this second vertex here and choose Alt M on my merge menu, merge at the last one that I selected, and now they're merged together. So if I choose A to select all, now you see this line segment. Now this line segment we think of as being in the first dimension. The reason is we can only scale along one dimension. So if I choose S and scale, you can see that it's getting longer, but I cannot scale in any other dimension. Now we'll say that this, this uh, line segment has length. Uh, we could think of it as width or we could think of it as thickness, whatever you want to think of it, but it can only be one of those. It can't be two of the different ones because it's only one dimension. So how do we move in even further to the second dimension? Well, according to physics, in order to go forward to another dimension, what we need to do is we need to create the object in the current dimension that we have by duplicating it along the parallel and also along the perpendicular. So while I have everything selected, I'm just going to choose Shift D to duplicate. And I'm going to move this along the parallel. So now we have two parallel um, one-dimensional objects. And I'm going to go also go per perpendicular. So I'm going to choose one of these vertices. Actually, I can shift select both of them. Choose E to extrude. Select off of that. And I'm just going to extrude them out like so. And let me just select this here and delete that one just so we're left with our duplication here, which will take the place. So now we have the two parallel lines, and we also have the two perpendicular lines. So if I A select this whole thing, then now I have a two-dimensional object. So now if I scale up, 
you will see that not only are we scaling along the length, we're scaling along the width, but we're not scaling along the thickness. So if I choose one front view, you can see that I can scale this as long as I want to, but it's not getting any thicker. So that is a two-dimensional object. So now, how do we get to the third dimension where us humans tend to live? Well, we have to say, follow the same rules. So we need to create an object that going by, you know, reference point of this, the two-dimensional object, it must be parallel and it must also be vertical. So in order to do that, I'm going to choose E extrude and I'm just going to extrude straight up here. And if you notice what I've done is I've created, if you look at this space here, it's parallel to this space down here. And we also have the perpendicular to all the different uh, points. So if we choose faces, this, this face is perpendicular to this face, this face is perpendicular to that face and so on. So this is what creates a three dimensional object. And this is what Blender is all about, creating 3D objects. So now that we've got our three dimensional objects, how do we get to the fourth dimensional object? Well, before I go there, let's look a little bit at this three dimensional object and why this works in Blender. So if I choose, let me go back, control up arrow, get back to my screen here. I've already got my camera set up and I've got a rudimentary sun set up. So I'm just gonna hit F12 to render, just so we can see this object. Okay, so I've done a render of this object and you know, by our uh, personal experience, we know that this is a 3D object because just looking at the design of this cube, we tend to know that it is a cube and it has six sides and all of that. But if you take a step back and you don't think about lighting and you don't think about your worldly experience, then just looking at this object, really you, all you see here is a 2D object. You do not see a 3D object. And in fact, in our real world, we do not see in 3D. Now I know some of you out there are probably saying, what are you talking about? I know that I see in 3D because if we back up here and we say, let's choose shift A, create a UV sphere and we have our sphere. Let me go control up arrow so we can kind of see it out here. We have this sphere and we look at it. As we see the, the geometry in the sphere, we know that it kind of goes around a circle. So we know this has actually more depth than what we're seeing here. So if we rotate, we can see it. And this is kind of how we see things in the real world. Say if you're looking at a ball, if you're looking at a ball in the real world, a sphere, we have what they call depth perception so that we think that we perceive the actual 3D, the three dimensions of the object. But in fact, the only reason that we know is it is a 3D object and we see it that way is the way the light hits it, the way we see shadows and all of our environmental things that project upon it so that basically the way light hits it in order for us to determine that it is actually a 3D object. So just like in the real world in Blender, just I'm gonna delete this here. If we look at this cube, we are really seeing and look at it straight on here, we're really only seeing a 2D object. It's only when we take things like our lamp, set it up, and we want to take, let me do a shift A, create a plane. Let's just scale this up. And we got our camera out here. I'm going to do control up arrow, go back here. And I'm just going to zoom into this a little bit. G, Z, Z. Oops. Try to get a better view of it. Now I'm going to do an F12 render. So now that we have the light hitting it and we have this shadow being cast, we also have this background plane so that we have some kind of reference point on, you know, this object is actually sitting on something and, and then you have this light reflection going on. We can actually see much better that it is a 3D object. And of course, the other thing that helps out in the 3D world of Blender is when you do an animation and you have the camera moving around the object so you're able to see, you know, the different sides of the object. That, and that tells our brains that, yes, this is a 3D object and it has these three dimensions that make up 3D objects. Okay, so back to the fourth dimension. What if we had a Blender that we could create objects that are four-dimensional objects? 
objects in the fourth dimension. Now, commonly you'll hear people say time is the fourth dimension. Well, time is sort of like a temporal idea. It's a temporal dimension. And what we're talking about here are spatial dimensions. So if you hear anybody say, you know, time is the fourth dimension, no, time is not the fourth dimension. In fact, personally, I do not believe in time. I believe it's just a concept, but I can make a whole two hour video on that. But let's look at this object as being in, you know, creating this object in the fourth dimension. Well, what is a fourth dimensional object? If the uh, zero dimensional object is just a spatial point and the one dimensional object is a line segment and a two dimensional object is a plane, three dimensional objects a cube, what is a fourth dimensional object? Well, a fourth dimensional object is a tesseract. So how do you create a tesseract? What you do is you take this cube, and some of you right now are watching this video and, and saying, okay, yes, go ahead and show me the, the uh, tesseract that you're gonna create. The reason they're saying that is because we cannot really create a tesseract. We don't know how to create a tesseract, but I can tell you the uh, rules that you have to follow. It's the same rules that we looked at before, and that is creating from this third dimensional object or three dimensional object, a object that is not only parallel to the cube, but also perpendicular to all the points. So if you were to do a Google search on Tesseract and look at all the images out there on the internet, you would see a lot of different ideas on what a Tesseract might look like, but none of them would be really correct. Now, I think most physicists will tell you that we as third dimensional beings cannot even imagine what this object would look like. We can't conceive of it. But let me put this to you. Let me suggest that just because nobody has yet been able to conceive of that idea doesn't mean that it is impossible. So now you can sit and try to think of what a fourth dimensional tesseract object might look like. And it may hurt your brain, but you know what? It's a good exercise to try to think of something like that. It's a good thought exercise because, well, that's what theoretical physics are. Those guys sit there and they try to imagine the things that nobody else has ever imagined. And it's kind of uh, helps you to expand your brain in a way, I think. So back to Blender for a second. Hopefully now you can see that even though we're looking on at 3D objects on a 2D surface, it really doesn't mean anything because also in the real world when we look at objects, we see a 2D surface. It's just our perception. So when we add the, the things that we have available in Blender, such as the lighting and the materials in order to create that illusion of 3D, it's really just duplicating what we have in the real world in order to trick our minds into seeing the 3D world around us. So I hope you enjoyed this little variance from the normal tutorials. Please rate, subscribe, and have fun trying to imagine your fourth dimensional tesseract. Thanks for watching.